Salam, greetings to you. My name is Fatima Berbe Yusuf and this is Colectronics. So we are going to solve a material science example on how to solve for true stress and true strain when you are given load, initial diameter and final diameter. And the thing is, usually when you, you are even asked to calculate your true stress and true strain, you are not just given directly the values for your final area or your, or your exponential increase in area. Instead, you are, you are expected to calculate that using your values for engineering stress and engineering strain. Meanwhile, if you want to revisit how to derive the formulas for true stress and true strain based on engineering stress and engineering strain, you can check out the previous video. Meanwhile, for this question, uh, how to solve for true stress and true strain when given load, initial diameter, and final diameter. So, let's say you were given a load of force as 76 kilonewtons. Now, it is important to note that when you are calculating questions like this, you are supposed to work in SI units. So, you are not supposed to leave the 76 kilonewtons like this. You are supposed to convert them to newtons such that your 76 kilonewtons will be 76 times 10 raised to the power of 3 newtons. Likewise, for your diameter, even though many times you will be given the value in millimeters or centimeters or anything like that it should finally be in meter so even if you are given a value of saying your original diameter to be 12.7 millimeters you should convert it to 12.7 times 10 raised to the power of minus 3 meters then your final diameter df is 12.0 millimeters let's take it as that so you can convert this to 12.0 times 10 raised to the power of minus 3 meters now by looking at these values you can be able to decipher that the area actually reduced meaning the length increased that is it. the material was put in tension as i earlier depicted in the previous video if you put a material or a rod in tension that's you draw it this way and that way the length will increase but the area will decrease so to solve this question we can remember that actually our um, true stress is equal to our force divided by our final area but we're not given you can act either Calculate your final area from this and just use it here to calculate your true stress or you can use the other method where you will need to calculate your engineering stress first and then use the formula based on that to calculate your true stress. But for this, since we're given our final diameter, we can just simply calculate it using the formula here. So our F, our load is 76 times time raised to the power of 3 newtons divided by your final area now since we're given diameter it's indirectly telling us that the cross section of the rod or the mass or whatever it is is a circle it's a circle so um our area is going to be pi d squared over 4 that's if you don't convert it to radius first so your pi d squared over 4 this 4 will come up and this will be in meters squared right so you'll be left with 76 times 10 raised to the power of 3 then times this 4 that came up divided by your pi if you're using a calculator you can simply use the value of pi on the calculator times your d square your d square is you're going to use your final diameter that's 12 times 10 raised to the power of minus 3 squared Now calculating this gives us six seven to one point nine nine times ten raised to the power of six Newton parameters squared.
so if you like you can cross check calculating for your true stress by using the formula that has engineering stress in it that's the formula that says our uh, true stress is equal to engineering stress multiplied by final length divided by original length. but then you might think ah we don't we're not given the original and the final length here we're only given diameter but that's not a problem if you can recall when we mentioned that our volume is going to be constant that's our original volume is going to be equal to our final volume in the previous video so this simply implies that our a o l o is equal to our a f l f if this area increases then this um length will decrease so it will be compensating the differences so if we are going to change this into a ratio since this is lf over lo to get lf over lo you have to divide both sides by lo here so this will cancel out this and then you can take away af by dividing both sides by af so you see our lf this will cancel this our lf over lo which is this part is going to be equal to ao over af so this simply means that even if you're not given lf and lo then you can have your true strain true stress sorry to be equal to engineering stress times ao over af so to do this you simply calculate your value of engineering stress multiply it by your original area divided by your final area but you can see that in this case we didn't need to go through a long process to calculate our true strain true stress because we're given our final diameter with which we calculated our final area meanwhile it might be better if you are solving an essay question instead of solving it directly like this to calculate your area final area differently to calculate before you start dividing this because in case the steps have their own individual marks next we are going to calculate our true strain for our true strain which is represented by this symbol we mentioned that it's actually the same as taking the integral of your increment of length dl over l from your original length to your final length and when we integrated this it gives us lin l from the original to the final length and of course when you substitute this it will give you lin lf minus lin lo which is the same thing as lin lf over L. so the same technique is used even if you are not given your final length and your original length as far as you can calculate your original area and your final area you can just substitute it into this so this can be simply expressed as lin ao over af so for this i'm going to go step by step i'll first calculate our original area that's pi do squared over 4 and then I'll calculate our final area, maybe somewhere here, equal to pi df squared over 4. So our original area is going to be, we can recall the value of our original diameter as 12.7 millimeters right which we converted to 12.7 times 10 raised to the power of minus 3 you square it and divide everything by 4 well for this we have pi times 12 times 10 raised to the power of minus 3 squared divided by 4 likewise you can use your calculator and use the value of the symbol of pi in your calculator to get the value of your original area to be one point two six six seven. That's one point two seven 
times 10 raised to the power minus 4. What's it going to be? Meter square, right? For this two, you can calculate. It's using your calculator. So that it's going to be 1.13 1 times 10 raised to the power of minus 4 meter square 2. Now, to calculate our through strain in this case, we simply substitute these values equal to lean. What's our original area? 1.27 times 10 raised to the power minus 4, right? Divided by 1.13 times 10 raised to the power of minus 4. When you divide 1.27 times 10 to the power mi minus 4 by 1.13 times 10 raised to the power minus 4, it's going to give you 1.12. So this will give you lin 1.124. So when you take the natural logarithm of that, lin of 1.124, it leaves you with your true strain as equal to 0 0.117 or you can approximate it to 0 0.12 remember that your strain in any case is going to be unitless because the value of the unit of the numerator is the same as the unit of the denominator in all the cases so there you have it we have calculated our um, true stress and true true strain without even needing to pass through the um, values of engineering stress and engineering strain. In another example, we are going to follow the process of calculating both the engineering stress and strain as well as the true stress and strain. So, see you in the next video.